are the lucky ones who shine like a thousand suns when all the colors run together. Hey, did you like that, Eduardo? Yeah, it's about time we got back, huh? All right. Hey, it was February 12th, and this one, amazingly, is for the February 12th fight between Steve Cunningham and Inard, Inad Lincana. Lucina? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is the prediction vid for that fight, and we're going to I'll go over both fighters' strengths, weaknesses, and then give my prediction at the end. Uh, first, I'll start out with the Inad uh, Lucina. He's a 31, 19, 2 and 0. He's got 10 knockouts for a 48% knockout ratio. Not that great on the power scale if you look at it. When you uh, look at his record, you'll notice that he has only went 12 rounds three times, and he lost one of those. So going those long distances, and before that, there's really, I mean, eight rounders when you start really looking into it. So he doesn't have a lot of going deep experience at all. So stamina could definitely play a factor into his fights. Throw in the fact that he has very heavy feet and doesn't move around the ring uh, that great, you know, that's going to hurt him as well, just keeping up. He can cut the ring off fairly decent. He has a high D, and his jab is more of a pawing jab. He throws one-twos, and when he counterpunches, it's usually just with the left hook. Uh, there's not a lot of head movement with this man. There's not a lot of... Uh, it's more of a straight, come-forward European style when you watch him. And, and, you know, when you say that, the European style is changing. It's no longer just dudes that are like, yeah, and they're robotic, you know what I mean? But for him, he, okay, he fits the, the early 90s to 80s uh, European style. High hands, you know, and he comes in and it's, you know, that wading through the water stuff. His uh, Herrera knocked him down, so he is a bit chinny. But Herrera's got some pretty good KO power there. And uh, his speed is okay. Yeah, not that, you know. He's got good wins over Felix Cora and uh, Esparza. But when you really look at it, when you look at the fighters with winning records that he's fought, he's only 12-2. and two. I say only. You know, I mean, he's still 12-2 and two against fighters with winning records. But he only has four knockouts in those. So when you start looking at that, you know, that power is out the window, man. It's just not there. Um, he doesn't go to the body that much. He's more of a copycat. Like, if you hit him to the body, then he's going to hit you to the body. So that's something that you could, you might be able to work in to counter from. Because if you catch him with a good body shot, you know he's going for your body, so maybe you want to, you know, fire that hook up to the head or the uppercut, you know, to try and catch him leaning in, you know, to throw those body shots. All right, going over to Steve Cunningham, 34 years old. You know he's he's a bigger cruiserweight when you look at him. I mean he's six foot three. He's got a free. He's got 82 inch reach. So when you start looking at those aspects of it, he's on the bigger side of the cruiserweights, and you know Lucina is on the smaller side because he's only six foot tall. Yeah, you know, he is a good boxer. He's not big on power. If he did, he would be able to knock out a lot more guys. There's no question about it. He's uh, like he's 23 and two with what? What is it? 12 knockouts? Yeah, so you know, he's not really 50 percent either. Uh, he's got very good wins over Huck, uh, Lardchick, Braithwaite, Jones. Lost the split decision against Adamek. He was knocked down three times in that fight. And he had Adamek on complete queer street in that fourth round. And if he had any power at all, the shots he was landing were so clean that he would have had him out of there. There's no doubt in my mind. But reality is reality. Adamek has a great chin. He was able to hold up, and he won the fight. So there you go. He tends to wing out the right when he throws his left. So as he's pumping that jab, which he throws a lot, his jab is probably his most dangerous weapon. If you actually watch, sit down and watch an entire fight, everything is set up off the jab. He uses the jab for range. He uses the jab to, you know, to tag you with. Because really, he's got the one-twos. I mean, it, it, none of his other punches are really that great. It's not like he's going to the body like a beast. It's not like he's, you know, throwing these monster hooks or 
you know, massive uppercuts. In fact, when he gets to the inside, he's more likely to hold you than to fight on the inside. He doesn't fight well with his backs on the ropes, so he deals with, uh, has trouble with pressure fighters. Lucina isn't this guy. Uh, he drops his hands during exchanges, which opens him up to, you know, getting hit, getting countered, getting, getting hammered. Because once he starts throwing, then the punches are coming from down here. Okay? They're not, he's not, pop, 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 pop. They're not staying high. As he's throwing them, he's dropping them down and then throwing them again. You see what I'm saying? That always leaves the head open as those punches are coming in from whatever angle they're, they're going. Let's see, he moves straight back, which you don't like to see. And he does have good movement, but like I said, you know, that's, uh, you know, without the power against a, a massive power fighter or somebody that's really going to bring the pressure, he's going to struggle with. But uh, Lucina isn't that guy. And I don't see this uh, fight ending in a knockout. Imagine that. But uh, I do see Cunningham taking the decision. Not because he's that great anymore. I think he's fading. I think he had trouble with the, the Troy Ross fight. I think he, um, you know, it's kind of a hollow victory. They say a TKO, TKO in five, but, I mean, really, it was a cut, and you could see the thumb go right in dude's eye. So, you know, it was just a bad cut. It wasn't like he was, Ross was hurt in any way. But I am going uh, unanimous decision for Steve Cunningham in this fight. And, uh... I think that's about it. What What was that? Well, that song in the beginning, that was Dark Waltz by Victoria Toca. Oh, yeah. You check her out. All right, anyway. Big Ragu, please comment, rate, subscribe. And uh, we out of here. We got to make a couple more videos today. Yeah? Okay. I'm out.